friends, my encouragement today is titled Consciousness, the Cornerstone of Our Church. The illumined consciousness of Dr. Elmer Lumsden and our founding members gave rise to a church known originally as Temple of Light Church of Religious Science. And so our church was founded on and built by the consciousness of light. And it must be maintained and sustained by our collective consciousness. Now, there are many definitions of the word consciousness, as you know. But for me, a person's consciousness is the sum total of their beliefs. Your beliefs, my friends, govern how you see the world and how you behave in and react to your world. For example, if you have a consciousness of lack and limitation, it means that you believe in the scarcity of good, which of course is another name for God. And you find it hard to accept and access the abundance that is rightfully yours. On the other hand, if you have a consciousness that is a belief in the givingness of all life to all, you see abundance everywhere and accept that abundance as your birthright. Our Declaration of Principles in today's responsive reading is a statement of our collective consciousness, which is the deeply held beliefs upon which our church is built. My encouragement this morning is therefore a call not just to our, our newest members, but to everyone who worships, works, and studies in this place to be a doorkeeper of our consciousness, for it is indeed the cornerstone of our teaching. Let us say together, we are a loving, happy, and prosperous family of God. Together, we are a loving, happy, and prosperous family of God. We seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Together, we seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all that we require comes quickly, orderly, and lovingly. And all that we require comes quickly, orderly, and lovingly. We express the spiritual faculty, faculties of faith. We express the spiritual faculties of faith, love, and strength. Love and strength. Wisdom, power, and imagination. Wisdom, power, and imagination. Understanding, will, and order. Understanding, will, and order. Zeal, renunciation, and life. Zeal, renunciation, and life. So friends, a church is called upon to be a lantern to those who may be in darkness, a place of refuge for those feeling weary or afraid, it is a place of fellowship, a place of instruction, a place where truth sets us free from the bondage of the past into the marvelous radiant light of hope, which is our personal salvation. It is called upon to give a focus of order in the midst of the seeming confusion of the outside world and to be a place of prayer where bowed heads can be replaced by a lifted consciousness of Christ, filling each member with the buoyancy of youth, love, motivation, creativity, and self-expression. At the same time, the church can be a place of buzzing activity formed by divine ideas, which when put into action, bring growth in spiritual vision, perception, and numbers of people and their finances and thus in services that we render to our society. So it is vitally important that each person who attends this church builds a consciousness which reflects the zest and vitality of spirit and that they be open and receptive to growth and change and to enjoy being of service to their fellow human beings. Every church member is God's trustee charged with the responsibility of knowing the truth for his or herself and teaching it through example to others. We are called to be a light in darkness and salt for seasoning one another. And now I know that too much salt can be bad for your blood pressure, so I don't want to pressure you. 
but I want to invite you to kick your consciousness up a notch by increasing your conscious giving to the place where you receive your spiritual nourishment. I'm again inviting all our members and friends to demonstrate their commitment to this teaching and the growth and expansion of this center by pledging a specific amount weekly or monthly. A pledge is not set in concrete and is not meant to be a financial bind. It can be adjusted up or down at any time, but I want you to know that setting your intention activates the law of giving and receiving by sending a message to the universe that you are committed to the idea of abundance and have a consciousness of financial growth for yourself and your church community. The beautiful Jesus tells us in the Sermon on the Mount, Matthew 5, verse 13, and I quote, Ye are the salt of the earth, but if the salt have lost its savor, wherewith shall it be salted? It is thenceforth good for nothing but to be cast out and trodden on the foot of men. End of that scripture. Jesus was talking to his disciples and followers about the power of consciousness. And his message to them still has great relevance for us as a spiritual community. What he was saying is that great numbers are not needed to change the world order, even as it takes only a pinch of salt to change the taste of a pot of stew, so a handful of dedicated believers can, can change the consciousness of the entire world. Reverend Elmer Dot Lumsden used to say, one on the side of God is a majority. So I see the people who attend this church as radiating centers of truth. Jesus calls to his disciples in that beautiful and articulate outline of metaphysical truth, reaching across the centuries to challenge each of us to accept the responsibility of bringing the spiritual leaven of truth to our country and to the world. When you are seasoned with the salt of truth, your own body of knowledge begins to reveal a new dimension. As the late New Thought luminary Eric Butterworth puts it in a wonderful book, which is now out of print, titled The Power Within You, he co I quote, the principle of relativity is made practical in a new concept of unitivity. You will come to see that even as a subatomic particle has no existence outside of the electromagnetic field that holds the atom together, but is the field expressing as a particle, so man has no existence outside of God. Man has no existence outside of God, but is the activity of God expressing as man. Just think about that. You are the activity of the supreme intelligence that created everything out of itself. Butterworth says all your scientific facts suddenly come to lie alive when you believe this and they become dynamic potencies which gives you a keener insight as you become a seasoning influence in the world. In the same wonderful Sermon on the Mount, Jesus says in Matthew 5, verses 14 to 16, Ye are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hid. Neither do men light a candle and put it under a bushel, but on a candlestick, and it giveth light unto all that are in the house. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. End of story. End of scripture. There is a story about a church built way up in the mountains of Switzerland. It was a beautiful little church that had been built with great care on the mountainside by the villagers who lived nearby. But there was one thing the church didn't have. Can you think what that might have been? It didn't have any lights. You couldn't just go into the church and switch on the lights like we do here. And yet every Sunday evening, the people who lived on the mountainside opposite the tiny church saw something magical happen. The church bell would ring and worshipers would wend their way up the mountainside towards the church. They would enter the church and then all of a sudden, the church would light up brightly. What do you think happened? 
Well, the people had to bring light with them, so they brought lanterns. When they arrived at church, they would light their lanterns and hang them around the church on pegs set in the wall so the light would spread all around. The interesting thing is, my friends, if only a few people came to church, the light would be very dim because there would only be a few lanterns. But when lots of people came to church, there would be plenty of light. There would be a blaze of light. And after the service, the villagers would take their lanterns home. And at this time, to those watching from a distance, it was as if a stream of light poured out of the church and over the mountainside. For many, it was a sign that all was well, that God's light was with them in their world. And the only time the little church lit up was when people were there. That's when it truly became a church. That's when the light shone most brightly. And my friends, this is how I feel about our temple of light. There is a radiant energy here that is intensified by the light of your consciousness when you attend services. As someone wise once punned, there is no you without church. There is no church without you. Let us affirm together, I am a radiating center of God's light. Together, I am a radiating center of God's light. To your neighbor say, you are a radiating center of God's light. Thank you for, sh for shining. You are a radiating center of God's light. Thank you for shining. And there is a little chant, I am the light. Let's sing it. I am the light. I am the light. We are the light, we are the light, we are the light of this world, and we shine, and we shine, and we shine so bright. Thank you. Light is a very interesting electromagnetic phenomenon that we still know very little about, even though we have learned how to use it. When you consider that light waves travel the 96 million miles from the sun to earth in just seven minutes, bringing light and life to all, and that a piece of coal is but stored up sunlight that shone down on earth millions of years ago, and that this coal may be returned to light and energy by the process of combustion, it kind of makes you think, doesn't it? In the same sense, we cannot really fathom the infinite God potential in each other. The light that lighteth every man coming into the world. But friends, people visiting this temple for the first time have told me that they could see that light and feel the love and joy that goes with it and this radiance in the faces of people here. And this is not surprising because within the very nature of every human, there is stored up divine energy like the coal in the earth, which may be stirred up and released to illumine the lives and light the way for our fellow men and women. The wonderful thing is that the same, in the same way that one does not hide the light under a bushel, you cannot hide the light of your spirituality. You don't have to announce that you have found the truth. You simply let your light shine. Emerson said that what you are speaks so loudly that one cannot hear what you are saying. So the emphasis has to be on being rather than on just talking or just giving it lip service. 
And this brings me to your assignment for this week. You thought you were going to get away? Your assignment, should you decide to undertake it, is to ask yourself this question. Who am I being in the various domains of my life right now? Who am I being in the various domains of my life right now? At work, at home, at play, how is my light shining? And then I want you to set your intention this week to look for the good, which means look for the God, in everyone you encounter. Allow no one to leave your presence without your silently blessing them by saying, I behold the Christ's light shining in you. Can we say that together? I behold the Christ's light shining in you. As you do, your light will cast its radiance over them, improve their sense of self-worth, and help to awaken them to their spiritual magnificence. I believe, friends, that your consciousness is truly a cornerstone of this center for spiritual living. And you know, I know for many people, going to church is like going to a performance or it's a once a week ritual, but we offer more than that. We are more than a, a takeout service from the delicatessen where you order a prayer and a, a quick fix. We are a way of life, and that way of life is rooted in deep spirituality and our conviction that God is at radiant and wonderful and loving work in every human life. Reverend Dr. Harry Morgan Moses of the Spirit Works Center for Spiritual Living in Burbank, California, puts it like this, and I quote, it is natural for any soul who has moved themselves to the experience of flow in health, in wealth, and in love, to seek to share for the authentic experience of heaven always seeks to be shared. We want to share this light because when you have it, you want others to, to enjoy it. Hence, the extraordinary value of our collective spiritual community. Being part of our collective spiritual community requires participation on your part. There is no church without you. You can participate through your continuous committed giving. You can participate by means of serving in one of our Love in Action ministries. You can participate by attending classes and events. It doesn't really matter how we participate. Our participation, however we do it, will help each of us and all of us to become clearer and more powerful about our individual identity and the gifts that we bring to support all of us being and living the demonstration of opulence and wealth and goodness and love and joy in every area of our lives. So with consciousness as our cornerstone of our community, we can give a metaphysical answer to the age-old question of Cain in Genesis 4, verse 9. Am I my brother's keeper? Absolutely not. That's the short answer. Many nations have tried to be a keeper to brothers around the world and have found that being a keeper inevitably arouses the resentment of the kept. So we are not our brother's keeper, but in a very real sense, I am my brother's brother, because we share the same Father, God. And more importantly, in the cosmic reality of the divinity we all share, I am my brother, and my brother is me. Our brothers and sisters of every, uh, every person we encounter. And so I should like to end today's encouragement with prayer. Please join me in blessing our spiritual community. Know with me that Temple of Light Center for Spiritual Living is the household of God, a place of perfection, a place of peace, and that the inhabitants of this household and all who come into contact with it are all divine beings. Nothing can enter our consciousness that contradicts the unity of good which we share as a community. This is a community of peace, of understanding, of fellowship, and of love and unity. This is a center of joy and a place of happiness and general com contentment. Here we find warmth and color and beauty. No one is a stranger within the center and the very walls vibrate with joy. Its foundation is integrity and its atmosphere is love and friendship. This is the truth which we release to law and know that as we have spoken, love, which is God, binds us together with cords of everlasting unity. 
saying I love you and I will never leave you. And I give thanks that our consciousness is the cornerstone of this church. And together we know that this is so. And so it is. Namaste.